Okay, welcome to another 88K Model Railroad video, and in this video we're going to look at the WIO ESP boards, and this is a little bit different from the Pi Pico boards. The installing process is a little more in depth, and it warrants having its individual uh, video. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over knowing which is uh, which board is which. We're going to look at the tools used in the installation process, and this installation process is a two-step method uh, compared to the single step in with the Pi Pico. Now, it consists of what they call an OTA, which is the over-the-air uh, installation. Now, this step shows us how to install that particular module or software into the Pi Pico via a Wi-Fi network and once we get that established then we can go back to the traditional uh, bin installation via the Rockrail uh, program and we'll go through and do the configuration and then it's operational uh, we'll just hit the ground pin and make sure that it triggers the right I.O. So now let's get started with the first segment, which is that uh, knowing which board is which. Now, there are a number of boards out there, and there's a lot of clones, and uh, you'll just see just different forms of these boards. And I think they make a difference in what is written in the WIO bin file. So when you go to the website itself, you can see that, and when I say website, meaning Rockrail's uh, wiki website, you can see that there are five of those bin files, the WIO bin files, and each one of them are associated with a particular board. And I've got the boards laid out here. I think it's important that you identify which board you have and then make sure that the associated bin file or WIO bin file will support it. And that's where you see the one, uh, the Wemos D1, the Lowland D32, the ESP32, the D1, the div board, and then the uh, WR overboard. Now, the board that I'm using is number four, which is the dev module board. That particular board, when you look at the details and the instruction sheet, it says that it is the same chip as the WO or WROVER board. And the board number four is actually called the WROOM, WROOM board. And when I did the installation, I tried to use five and it didn't work. So I think there are some other boards that are out there. Also, I got another mini board, which was the purple version of the um, S bo S2 board. And I tried to get it to install and had trouble. And I thought I had it installed once, but when I tried to go back and do it again, it it, it failed. So I'm not for sure what is involved with that, and I didn't have time to troubleshoot, so I just continued on with this dev board, and that's what we're going to look at uh, today. So now next, let's go over the way that the this particular video is laid out in, with the installation process. Here we are with the insulation I process I've got it broken down into three operations you have the operations for the uh, ESP 32 board then the operations for the firmware software installation and then finally the rock rail implementation now within each one of these operations I have the steps broken down and what we're going to do so we're going to look at the ESP board selection that's what we've already done and talked about now we're going to look at the PC connections, then the driver tools, and the data cables. Now, each one of those plays a pertinent role in your success in getting these in installed. And number one is the driver. So when you connect the PC to the board, sometimes the drivers will kind of 
I mean, they just won't uh, be assigned. Windows will say there's no driver found and you can't get it installed. And then there's a tool that actually helps support that. And that's what we're going to go over. And then with the operations, or I'm sorry, with the software, the firmware and the software installation, we're going to look at the firmware, the tools that are involved. We're going to also look at a factory reset, then the IDE programming tool, which control, which sets up the OTA. And we're going to do a factory reset. We're going to do the firmware installation, and then the OTA, and the uh, finally the bin installation. And then after that, we're going to verify uh, with the implementation. We're going to verify everything's working, then configure. Um, verify the OTA and then configure the WIO and then just do a test function. So that's pretty much what's what going to happen there. So now let's get started on the first uh, operation segment, which is the board selection.